Hello everyone, it's Rebecca with a giant art and craft supply haul video for you. And this is just a portion of the stuff that you're going to see in this video. And I'm going to go through category by category and show you all the stuff that I've gotten. So you might be wondering why I have so many art supplies that have come through. And the reason for that is particularly started with me going and actually developing an art course for the people at scrapbook.com and I've been in their studio filming a great course which is going to come out in the new year and I'm really excited to share it with you. I think you're going to love it and I will be sure to share more about that when it comes closer to the time of that going live. But um, as a result of that I had to develop quite a few new lessons for that and supplies of course came into that so I ended up buying some new supplies and they gave me some supplies all sorts of things so I've got like daubers here and inks and sprays and all sorts of things washi some new acrylic blocks for my stamps lots and lots of stamps and more and more so some really really fun stuff and while I was over filming just recently in the scrapbook.com studio I actually was able to pick up some more things there. They were so sweet to give me a gift certificate for being there to spend in their shop and actually gave me a tour of their warehouse which I will share about more soon. It is quite a fun place and then I also went on and spent some time with family and friends and while I was out about I went shopping to bring some stuff back with me because it is actually much cheaper to buy there and it happened to be right around the Black Friday sales so I took advantage of that and I ended up with rock bottom prices which are even better for someone who works with the currency in Britain so I ended up with a really good deal for a number of things so a lot of this was free and a lot of it I got at really rock bottom prices and I want to share all of it with you section by section and just show you through a bunch of it and this of course is just a small portion so let's get started and I hope that you will find some fun stuff that's inspiring to you you definitely don't need all of this but I want to hear from you in the comments below over on my blog just pop into the description area of this video if you're on YouTube and then you can see a link to go over to my blog and over there I will link to everything that I'm showing and you can find it there by category so it'll be linked for you and then in the comments let me know what kind of supplies you're absolutely desperate for me to do a tutorial on or a type of technique that you're excited about I just want to hear from you about what you're excited about and what you'd like to see from me and hopefully we can do some really fun things together in the coming weeks and months with all of these supplies that I've gotten to share some fun new things with you. So let's get started. Let me show you through the books that I brought back with me first and I think that these are really wonderful each for their own reasons so let me show you these ones first. These three here are actually books of the Bible that have been published in a newer translation called the Passion Translation. This is the book of John. This is Psalms, Poetry on Fire. And this is Proverbs, Wisdom from Above. And this really great guy is translating it all based on the concept that we have a Father God in Heaven who is madly in love with us, who is passionately in love with us. And it is not, I would say, the kind of Bible that you study out of, but this is the kind of Bible that you read out of in order to really grasp something new in Scripture that maybe you haven't noticed before, and then you can go to a study Bible and see what it means to you once it's been illuminated to you in a new way. It's just a, a great way to take a fresh look at scripture. I've talked about this before on my blog. I really like to read other translations and so that I can grasp understanding that maybe I skip over, especially as somebody who's been around scripture most of my life or all of my life. And that really helps me to zone in on areas that I haven't seen before and to just have a translation that's based on 
the love of a father is something that's really quite interesting. So I'm looking forward to looking at these. I got this book here, the Illustrated Bible Handbook, and I will link to it as well. But this is quite fun. It just shows you through the Bible in kind of an illustrated way. You find something that you're talking about here. This is God's message in Daniel. And it really kind of talks about that section of scripture. It really is quite handy. And I have a large version of this, but I'm really limited in my studio area and I need every space to count. So my large handbook can stay downstairs now. And now I can just have this one. That's literally the size of my hands. And I can take this with me when I want to just quickly look something up when I'm doing a Bible study or a devotional for you guys. So I'm pretty happy about that. I have a couple of things here. I picked up a composition book. These are, you know, just really basic lined paper. And I got this so that I could start to do some studying of hand lettering in a place that I could keep my work and have some lined areas, but I wouldn't end up um, throwing it away so I can see my progress as I go. I used to actually take calligraphy classes when I was in high school and it's been so many years I really feel quite rusty and I want to spend more time working on my hand lettering in the next couple of years so that I can get better and better at it. I've shared a few tips and tricks with you along the way but I would love to do more of that. So I've gotten this and I also picked up this speedball textbook. This I can't link to because it's actually a used book. All of these few here are actually used books that I picked up at Powell's. This is actually a really fun used book that my, my grandpa, when he passed away, my mom's dad, he actually uh, gave me all of his calligraphy pen nibs, his calligraphy pens, all of that, and his speedball textbook books that he had as well for hand lettering. And this is full of really neat things here. You can see some different examples and everything on how to do certain types of hand lettering, how that works with those pen nibs and all of that. So it's really quite special. But this particular one I didn't have in my collection, so I thought that was a really fun find. I picked this up. This is um, the theory of the Spencerian penmanship in nine easy lessons. This is a really quite fancy lettering from the old days, but I think that practicing the Spencerian penmanship would probably improve my lettering all around because this is all about how you position yourself when you're sitting and that is really important to you being able to do this kind of lettering. So I think it could be really interesting to have a look at. I don't have tons of time to get into all of these all the time, but I love to do this when I can. And so at least I'll have those things available to me. This was another fun old book that I found called Dance of the Pen. And I thought this was interesting. It's somebody who's taken a calligraphy pen and made artwork from it. So everything in here is done with that pen. So all of the mark making just makes artwork out of it. And I thought this was so fun. I just have to, you know, put this somewhere where I can look through it when I have free time and just enjoy the concept of using a calligraphy pen to make designs. And I thought that was really interesting. This here is uh, calligraphy and handwriting letters. And these books are never very cool looking on the inside. I like color. I think all of us do these days. But this is a very practical book and these really help improve writing. So if you ever pick up things like that used at um, a shop, then you've got yourself a bit of a gem. And this is at Michael's. I think you can go to any Michael's and pick this up. I won't be able to link to this, but um, as faces learn to draw step by step. And I picked this up because I think I really enjoy doing faces, but I think I could do with some help on specific elements and also the age of people. And I think that kind of goes over it a bit in here. So I thought this would probably be quite handy to have in my collection. I've got a few other books on that sort of thing. This right here is the Artist's Journal Workshop. I enjoyed this on my airplane ride home. I had a few of them actually. I was in four airports on my way home. So I enjoyed looking through this and I would really encourage you, if you don't have this, 
by Kathy Johnson. Definitely pick it up. I'm going to link to these. And then Creative Girl, which is mixed media techniques for an artful life. This is really interesting. It has some actual tutorials in it, which I think is interesting. And I think it's more along the lines of actual tutorials. So that's quite fun. And then lastly, I actually got this from scrapbook.com. It is the Dilutions journal. It came with the strap that kind of hooks in here and there, but I um, ended up popping that off and decorating my outside cover and it comes with a little pocket here which you can put stuff in and then this is where the paper is. I'll just show you this for now, but I have been filling this art journal as part of my class that's coming up with scrapbook.com and so here is an example that I've done and I think there's some real room for us to learn how to illustrate what God is speaking to us about on scripture and then just put it into an art journal and this is a great way to do things off the pages of our Bible. Some people are not comfortable with that which is what I teach here on my blog and YouTube channel and this is a fantastic way to take time to process what God's speaking to us about and put it in a place that will really remain important to us over the years. So there's lots of stuff in there and I can show that to you at another time and even do some tutorials on an art journal in the future. I've got one currently on my blog. Let me show you through some of the tools that I brought back with me. Probably the most evident is this here, the Dymo Letra Tag. This is actually a label maker and you can flip this up right here and put this label section in here, a cartridge. This is for white paper. It comes in a number of things. This is clear and this is more white paper and I picked those up while I was there but you can also get a uh, white plastic and there's some various things there and when it feeds out of here it can go two layers high. There's different types of text that you can do and all sorts of things and then it just pops straight out of here and you can give it a slice and it just is perfect. I think this will really help me with my organization and I love a good bit of organization. There is the envelope punch board and if you saw on my social media, you may have noticed that when I went through security, they actually <laughs> tried out my different elements of this. I imagine, obviously, because there's a blade in here, they wanted to check that out and that just kind of punches through there. So they punched some stuff, which I imagine maybe they were just trying to test it out, but maybe, who knows, maybe they were really into crafting and wanted to check it out for themselves. But I thought that was quite funny. So it comes with this, which is for scoring and then you can line everything up and it shows you exactly what kind of card size you're making and then it will help you make the right envelope with all of this information right here. It also comes on a sticker area here which is really great as well as a little bit bigger too. So I think this will be a really fun way for me to do my own personalized envelopes for people and I've been looking forward to having this for a while so that will be really nice. You can see I've got some different tapes. This is a removable tape and this is a permanent tape and both of these were gifts from the wonderful folks at scrapbook.com. They were really sweet to me and gave me one of each of these because I have British brands currently and now I can show you American brands as well. So these are really good. This is Tombow and Umbrella Crafts and they're really really good quality. So I love that and if you can't see there's actually a runner and you can just roll this along and it just pulls that tape on there and the removable will come straight up so that's great. This is the quick sticks. This helps you to place with precision and pick up tiny little things and that sort of thing. So this is quite a neat tool and it has two sides to it. This is quite sharp. Very handy. This is a pair of tweezers with some good amount of hold on them so you can actually, you know, hold on to an item and then it will hold itself 
in place so that you can kind of set things down and you've seen me use this. I got this uh, as part of getting ready for the course that I'm doing, this class at scrapbook.com and so that's quite handy. I got myself some cutter bee scissors finally. These are fantastic really fine cut scissors which will be great for fussy cutting small items. I got myself another one of these Illustrated Faith Bible mats simply because I have a studio that's too full and I can't actually find my other one. I think it's gone missing somewhere in the midst of everything and it is clear and as I'm speaking to you I can see it right here. Would you believe it? I've been looking for it for two months and here it is. <laughs> so now I have two which is fantastic. When I lose one I'll know where the other one is. That is hilarious. So here we have brushes from Ranger. These I think are really good for people who are looking for some brushes for acrylic or for watercolor. I thought these were quite good. I used these while I was at scrapbook.com and I really am happy to recommend them. They're quite nice. It's a good little set of different types. And this is some more water brushes. You fill the barrel with water. I haven't tried this brand yet so I wanted to give them a try but you can just fill that barrel with water and that means that you don't have to have a bucket of water with you when you're traveling which is fantastic or when you're just right at home and don't want to have that. And this is the tiny attacher. These are extra staples. You can see the size of these. They're super tiny and I just wanted to show you the label actually on the back here. That's a standard size. This is a mini staple size and this is the tiny attacher. So it's very, very tiny in comparison. And this just flips open like this and then you can put your staples right in there and then close it back up and you're ready to staple. And this is actually really quite cool. I think I will enjoy having that on hand now and some extra staples for it. These things here, this is Stick It. This is a really great adhesive. You can use this for die cutting and it will actually basically create a sticker out of what you're using essentially. So you put this on and I will show you how to use this sometime. It's quite fun. It's not great for really fine die cutting but it works great if you're just cutting a small area and or rather a larger area that is or items that don't have fine detail. That's what this is really fantastic for. So I like these. This right here is a stamping mask paper. So what this is, is paper that is sticky on the back. And if I peel this back so you can see, then this right here is sticky and this part is just the backing paper. So you can die cut this just how you want it and then you can place it on top of an area that you want to keep from getting any color on or anything like that and then you can peel it up when you're done and it's protected that area. This is great if you've got a die cut that is to go with a stamp set. It's really good if you just want to mask off certain areas. There's lots of lots of different uses for this. Here's an example of something that I've die cut and I could put this over something and it would keep all of that nice and protected. So that's super fun. I really like this stuff. This is ink sheet transfer film. This I thought was interesting because although it doesn't actually erase, it is a really good alternative if you don't have any graphite paper and you want to trace a picture. So you can put a picture over the top and just trace with a stylus that has a small point on it. This one has the added benefit of having a edge for doing other things with. I'm not too excited about the actual handle. It's kind of got like a, a sticky feel to it, but otherwise it's quite an interesting tool. And I think that this is quite nice for lots of different things, but it's actually used for making your die cuts create interesting detail. So you put your die cuts through but you just use a crease pad which gives it a bit of a bend and that means that it goes in as a cushion and it 
just creates an image out of your dies instead of actually cutting with them. So it means you can get more out of your dies and create designs, which is really neat. This is obviously a bone folder. It's Martha Stewart one. I thought it was really nice. I've been using that. And I purchased these, which are for putting a stamp on top of. It's a little bit of a thick block of plastic. It's called an acry acrylic block. And these things are perfect for putting your stamps onto your clean rubber stamps or your clear stamps for getting a good impression when you stamp. And they come in a few different sizes. These are my ones from Umbrella Crafts. And then Inka Dinka Do does another one that's actually the same size as the margins of our journaling Bibles, which I thought was quite cool. And I have enjoyed using these so far. I like that there's a little bit more space here. It means that I can do this on the surface of my Bible or page and I don't end up getting my fingers in the way, which happens with thinner type of acrylic blocks. So I think I'm going to be sticking with these. I really like them. This here is from Rangers Delusions uh, from Diane Reevely and it's actually a journaling block. It's kind of hard to see but if I put it in the light right you can tell it's got an extra line here which is really fantastic. I'll show you how to use this in the future but it's really good for journaling, art journaling and for you know drawing in pencil lines of some interesting shapes or for tearing your paper in an interesting way, anything like that and it's got a little ruler on the edge. If I push those out of the way a little bit you can see here that I have what looks like something that I already own, which is true. I already own the 9 inch version of this, but this is the 12 inch version and it has this arm that pulls out and that means that I then snap it into place. It sounds like it's breaking, but it's not. And that gives me a 15 inch length here and I can just pop that back into place. And this right here is a good 12 inch length, which means that my 12 inch papers will actually have a way to do this. It has a little thing here, which means that I can flip this, which is fantastic, I think. And it, it will lock it in place so I don't end up having it hurt anyone. These things here are actually quite dangerous. And um, I actually put my thumb right into one. Uh, literally picked it up like this while I was in luggage trying to sort out everything on my way back and I cut my thumb quite badly and it, it bled for about an hour ridiculously while I was checking in and doing all my luggage and they thought I was a real mess. I was like bleeding all over the luggage. It was really disgusting <laughs> and all from just a tiny little puncture. These things will cut your paper beautifully but don't accidentally pick them up. They're really dangerous. So let me grab some more stuff and show you through more. These here are the really fun embellishments that I got. I got some foil and rub-ons. I also got some other embellishments and really fun clips. These are for, these look like little hangers, which is really cute. And got some arrows. These are just really big jumbo ones. This is obviously hearts. And these are these really sweet little cameras. And that is how that looks clipped on there. And they're all just really, really sweet, I think. This has feathers on it and I think, well, they are feathers, and I just think that all of these are so much fun. This is a really beautiful linen ribbon by Tim Holtz, and I love using this on my tags. I think it's really pretty. These are little alphabet cards, and I think that these are going to be fun for doing some little mixed media projects. I'm not sure if you can actually see that in there, but it's quite fun. And then here is some foil, which I can use a number of different ways to get foiling onto my projects. And I'll show you how to use this if you haven't before. I know everybody loves a bit of foil. And these rub-ons, there's more to the set, but of course I used it in my class that's coming up. So you'll have to stay put or have a look on my links to see the rest of what I probably use. So you can guess what might be in the class. And then I got some stickers. These are Teresa Collins stickers. I'm not sure if these are able to be linked to. This is just a nice white with black text of lots of different 
alphas, which is always handy. This is small talk, so these have actual words in them, in sentence form. This is chit chat, and these are just a tiny bit bigger, but they're just words. And then this is big chat instead of chit chat, and it's pretty much the same words, I think, but they're slightly bigger. So these kind of complement each other quite well, and so do these. I think these will all go really well together, and I'm quite happy with that. I needed a new chit chat because I was kind of running out of some of the stuff I love. So I got that, and then I got a few extras of some of these to use in my class because it wouldn't be right for me not to feature some of the illustrated faith stuff on my new class coming out because they are just perfect for art journaling in your Bible and that whole process of faith journaling. Uh, I have a huge amount of stacks behind me so that I make sure that I go through all of this organized, but I've already missed out some stickers that belong in the last section of stuff I showed you. So here they are. They're super cute. These are from the Whatever is Lovely collection from Illustrated Faith, and these are so, so fun. I really like these. I've already started using some of them. And these as well. This is from Simple Stories, so fancy, and they are so cute. I love these little stickers here, which you may have seen in my art journal. So there's lots of fun things here on those. And then this is some page prep stuff. So as you know, I live in England and this is my heat tool. But when I went to America, I didn't have a heat tool and I did borrow one while I was in the studio, but I felt like it would be really helpful for me to have an American one for whenever I'm traveling or anything like that. So I got myself a good old American one. And as you can see, it's black and this one's white and that's because they're turning them all black. So if you buy one that's rather new, you may see it black. Whereas obviously while I'm in England, I will just keep using my white one, but it is the exact same product. It's just a new color. And I picked up some more Art Basics Clear Gesso. This is from scrapbook.com and the Dina Wakeley Media Clear Gesso. These are my two very favorite clear gessos for covering my Bible pages before I get started creating on them so that I can protect them from bleeding through and any of that kind of stuff. It just makes it simple to do. And when I am doing that, I always like to use some Ranger Craft Sheet that's been cut to size. And you will have seen this one used quite regularly. This fits my bigger Bible that I have. And I put one on my page just to cover the page that is adjacent to my work. And then I pick up a Bible page and slip this right underneath it. And then that protects the page here. And I can even use it as a surface or a palette or anything like this, because this is non-porous and heat proof. And then this works as well. And it doesn't stick. You can just gesso your page and do lots of creativity on it. But while I was there, I, um, I needed a bit more. So this is for my single column Bible that I have, and this is for my double column journaling Bible. So now I've got one for each Bible that's the right size, and I'm finding this quite handy. And actually, the one Ranger craft sheet got all four of these for those two Bibles. They're quite big, and you can get a lot out of them, so it's pretty handy. I got just a few washi tape while I was gone and I think these are quite fun. This one is from Illustrated Faith and there's little sections so you can actually just cut little sections out and use them and they're transparent so they kind of melt into whatever you're doing. Especially this one you can see that it has a bit of a transparent feel to it so it really takes on whatever is underneath it and it's got some really nice words on there. This is sort of a book paper dictionary type thing and some musical notes. These, I think the Tim Holtz washi tape are perfect for tip-ins. Anything that is his tape, it's actually tissue tape. And this tape has got the ability to kind of cure once it sits for a little while and it really cements nicely. So it stays put and is perfect for a tip-in or something where you want to actually use it to, you know, tape something in and let it hinge 
in your work or just actually tape something down it really isn't going to peel up so I, I like that the little bee stuff is quite cute I mean this is foil paper here and you can see it kind of glimmering in the light it's really pretty these are feathers on this particular design and it's beautiful but it doesn't actually stay put very well so I'm not convinced about the tackiness of them but if you can get over that maybe glue it in or something like that it is quite fun and beautiful I got some really fun pens and pencils while I was away, some markers, things like that. So Microns are the most popular really for that black writer that you can use on your Bible pages and for lots of other things they are used for tons of things. But for my blog and YouTube channel, which does do a lot about Bible art journaling, a lot of people prefer micron pens or believe that they're the only thing you can use, but that's not actually quite the truth. You can use a number of things. It all has to do with how you have the size, this tip, and that will make a difference in whether you're going to have something bleeding through to the other side of your page. So let me see here. This is, this is an 08 and this is an 05 and I'm going to get this right up in the camera so you can see it. There, you can see there's a massive difference in the 08 on the top and the 005 on the bottom. And the 08 is more likely to bleed than that smaller one. And the reason for that is because there is more moisture that's managing to get through to the Bible page and work its way through the paper. So when you are choosing stuff, you want to choose stuff that doesn't have a really juicy marker or is going to go through quite quickly because of the amount of liquid that you're adding. So that said, some are better quality than others, but Micron's a fantastic brand. And I was running dry on a few of mine, so I picked up a new set from scrapbook.com. They got that for the class for me. And then I also picked up some Prismacolor. I'm looking forward to trying these. This is actually a bold one, which is, it's a brush tip, which is a bit like what you would find on the Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens. And then just some other ones, which are, this is a chisel kind of calligraphy tip. And then a couple of these, which are smaller, like the 05 and the 005 which was that really tiny one. So it's a nice broad range. I haven't tried these before, so I'm interested to see how they work. And I also picked up the Illustrated Faith pen, which is fantastic. Love it. It is really good. It's a pigment-based ink, which means that it really does stay on top of your paper a lot better. And it dries really quickly, which is really good. Shauna Noel designed this for her company, Illustrated Faith, and I think she did a fabulous job. Scrapbox.com gave me this Slick Writer pen. It's a black writer, and I think it's really a sweet thing for them to give me, and I'm looking forward to trying this on things like vellum and stuff like that. It will dry on there, which is fantastic. And then I got myself some Sharpies, which are a ultra fine tip, which is great. It's about a 00 or it's, like, it's like an 05, I think, in size, about there. And these are quite juicy. They do bleed through, so I wouldn't recommend them for your Bible art journaling unless you have first gessoed your page and made sure that it is absolutely bone dry. People hurt their pens when they don't keep their paper completely bone dry before they add stuff and these work fantastic as long as you make sure the surface you're starting on is totally dry. That's how it is with all felt tip pen markers. You can look at my blog post on my blog about that if you want to learn more about that. I got myself some Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. I have a set of 48 colors and they don't come in some of these flesh tones and some of these grays. So I got some warm and cool grays and some of these kind of flesh colors, which will be great for doing portraits and shadowing. And then I also picked up a little Papermate HB7 or 07 millimeter pe pencil, a mechanical pencil, which is fantastic for doing my 
designs and that sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to all of these things, but that kind of leads me into these, which are for adding color, which I'll show you a number of things for. This is the pre-marketing basics collection of watercolor pencils. And these act quite different than any of the other watercolor pencils I've had, I think, and I really like them. They kind of draw on like they're gonna be a really hard lead. And as soon as you add water to them, they just really bloom to life. And it's a fantastic color set because there's kind of a dark and a light version of the different colors. So there's a light and a dark blue, light and dark green, and so on and so forth. It means that you can really get that shading effect quite well and mix your colors really well with this. It's a good starter set for watercolor pencils in my opinion. And then there's a clean color real brush markers. These are fantastic. And I actually have here two other kind of flesh tones that I thought would not be in this set. This is a really good color set. I got these on the Black Friday sale. I would not have afforded them otherwise, but I got them on 50% off and couldn't really go wrong with such a good deal. So let's see here. There's these colors, which you can see, and then I'll pull these out so you can see the other kind of middle color set. So there's some blues and greens there that are really beautiful. And then if I close this up and go here, you can see that there's kind of some darker, more natural colors there. So it's a really nice broad set, I think. And then these flash tones are quite good. The nice thing about these is you can pull them out and I'll just grab some paper here so you can see that this actually has a brush tip on it and will go to a very fine point or it will spread out and that's what's really nice about these is that they are brush tip and they're highly pigmented so you can actually add water to what you're doing or you can just use it like this. You can also go tip to tip so you can pull these out and touch them together and then you'll get the start of one color and then you'll go into another color. So there's a ton of things you can do with these and they're really, really nice. And so I'm looking forward to that. I have a number of the Distress Ink colors already, but I did not have these ones, which are beautiful. Some of these are brand new, like the Mermaid Lagoon, Hickory Smoke, Carved Pumpkin. There's some really beautiful Wilted Violet. There's some really nice ones here that I wanted to get for projects that I was working on. The Potting Soil Archival Ink and a new Jet Black Ink. I think I've just made mine a little bit worn out, so I got a new one of those. And this is the Moonlight White Pigment Ink. And pigment inks are a bit different than the oil-based or water-based inks. They're just all a bit different. Pigment sticks to the top of the surface, like this rainbow pad here. My mom had one of these when I was younger and I had to toss it at one point, which was quite sad. So I'm really glad to have another one of these, which I got at 50% off, which I love. And I will really enjoy these. These are embossing inks, basically. This is a perfect medium, which is essentially like an embossing ink. Uh, I imagine some of you might be scared that I've said that, but they're uh, basically, they do the same sort of thing. They're both clear and sticky, which allows you to add embossing powders to them, that sort of thing. And these will all act differently. These are water-based, so you can even watercolor with them. And these are oil-based. And then this is obviously pigment-based. So they all act a bit different. And I've shared a bit of that on my blog before. This is a Distress Refresher, which is fairly new to the Tim Holtz product line. You can just spray this right on the surface of your ink pad and it will actually refresh it so that if it's dried out, it will be good rather than you needing to possibly re-ink it or even go as far as throwing it out. You can just refresh it and that will really help extend the life of them. And that's fantastic, especially if you live in a dry place. I do not, but I will find that quite useful. And I bought, and this is the tool that you use to blend with these colors here, the distressing, and you just put on this little 
blending tool, one of these things, and I got some extras of these. You've seen me use this tool lots, but I have gotten some extras of these because I've got new colors, and I tend to keep an extra one. And I'll show you here. What I do is I actually label the front of mine with a label sticky and color it so that I can see it, and then I put on the back here some Velcro, and then that allows me to take one of these and dedicate it to that, and then it just sits on the shelf like that, and I find that quite handy. These here are really, really popular. In fact, I think these are probably the most popular item at scrapbooks.com. They're really fun, these daubers. And you can see that I've downloaded their label here and I've put all of my gelatos in. I've got a 28 set and I've put them in here. And you can just pick them up and stick your finger in them and hold them to blend with or hold them like this. And it gives you some really nice color there. And I picked up another set with a gift certificate that scrapbook.com gave me. They gave me these as a gift, but then I also bought a new set here because I want to start to get all of my distress inks using this system and I think it will really help with my blending smaller areas when this kind of larger surface might not be what I'm looking for. You might be wondering if this video is ever going to end and I promise you it will, but I still have paper, dies, stamps, and stencils still to go. So if you're bored and you don't like seeing new things, maybe you should stop now, but feel free to stick with me. I did promise you a giant haul video, and this is definitely a giant haul video. I need new storage solutions ASAP. This is ridiculous. And I'm really grateful to have been given so many things from scrapbook.com. The people there are incredibly generous and wonderful people, and I'm really looking forward to showing you the class that we've developed, but also I got some amazing Black Friday deals. Yes, I braved the sales, but I went in the evening when everybody had already kind of run through the store and enjoyed a nice leisurely walk through and found some great deals. So super fun stuff, and I don't think that you need to own everything I own at all, but I really hope that you will feel inspired to maybe take your creative ideas in a certain direction based on some of the things that are interesting to you, or at least be able to give me some insight into the things that you would really like to see from me tutorial-wise so that I can make sure that I use the right supplies first based on what everybody is re really wanting and needing from me most at the beginning. So it's gonna obviously take me a while to show you all of these things in videos, so this is a great way for me to hear some feedback from you. So let me start with this pearlescent watercolor jewel box. These are such great pearlescent watercolors. You've seen me use the Gonzai Tombi watercolors in other videos, and you can see actually my review of that set. This is from the same company, the Zig watercolor people have made this, and it is just a bunch of pearlescent watercolors that are absolutely gorgeous, and I think they actually show up even better on black than they do on white. So I'm not really sure how much I would use them in my Bible, but I might in art journals and things like that, and I think I will really enjoy these. It's a really nice set. You can see how tiny it is, and I think that I will get a lot of use out of these that does seem to last quite a while. This is acrylic glazing liquid. This is actually used to extend the working time of acrylic paints, which are these. So when you add some of this to your acrylic paint, it makes it not dry as fast so that you can actually paint with it longer before you need to start adding more paint. So this is quite handy, but you can also use this in other ways. And a friend of mine, has actually used this, Valerie Shardine. She uses this to prepare her Bible pages with. I have not tried it yet, so I'll let you know how I get on with it. But she's a fine artist and does beautiful artwork in her Bible. If you haven't seen her work, do go check it out. Valerie Shardine has some beautiful things, and this is something that she uses, so I decided to pick it up. Golden has beautiful products, and I really trust what she does. 
and actually got a really fun evening with her after having a creative hangout with everybody. I went to dinner with her and she is just absolutely a gem. I really adore who she is so do check her out and I will link to her on my blog post as well so make sure and go check her out and give her some love on my behalf. These are Distress Spray Stain. This is just like the Distress, Distress Inks but in a spray stain version. This is the antique bronze and it has a real shimmer to it and this is the vintage photo, a nice brown color which you saw me spray in the front of my art journal that I showed you earlier. So those are quite fun and these are Distress Paints. The nice thing about these is you can actually take the lid off and this right here has a little thing and when you push it it actually releases the paint onto the dauber and then it will be nice for you. I tend to use my Distress Sprayer and just spray a little bit of water on the surface and it keeps it wet. You can also use the Distress Refresher which I have just shown you a minute ago. You can use that to spray on here and that will keep it nice and moist when you close that up and then these will last for a long time for you. These paints are fantastic and it's great for getting a nice quick background on things. And then I bought a Delusions spray ink which I'm looking forward to using. This is the turquoise color and actually this is the only one I have so I haven't tried these yet so I hear that I will really love them and several people have asked me to try them out. And this is the Dina Wakely Media Heavy Body Acrylic Paint. These dry on a matte finish and are perfect for using in art journals and Bibles and places where you're going to close the book and you don't want things to stick. I would recommend that you use either the Dina Wakely Media Heavy Body Paints or that you use these Liquitex Heavy Body Paints. These are all acrylic and they're permanent when dry. There's some beautiful colors here and I'll link to all of them so I don't need to list them all but can we just say how beautiful that transparent Viridian hue is. I love a beautiful green. So here is the stencils that I got. I have a few brands that I really like and so it was nice to invest in a few of them. I got some from the class that I did at scrapbook.com and also some other ones. So let me show you these quickly. This is a Heidi Swap stencil, which I think is beautiful. I love this pattern. And this one here actually is a two pair set. So it actually comes with both of these. And I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. Here you can see that a bit better there. So that's quite fun. I also, use this one. You've probably seen this one in a preview of my upcoming class which is really a nice design from Balzer Designs. This is a really neat little hero art stencil. I love this one, this Finnevar one as well and I think they are a really great complement to each other in getting some bigger stars in that moon. I think it's really beautiful. This 12 by 12 stencil is really neat. I haven't been able to use it yet properly, but I think it's gonna be a really neat element for art journaling and that sort of thing. I'll pull those out of the way and I've been slowly collecting Tim Holtz's stencils. I think they're really nice. These are layering stencils, so you can use them in little sections. Here's the rays and there's these two here, the cargo and the measured one. These arrows here, watch out for the stamps and dies. I'll show you in a moment of this kind of set that goes together for here and there is what it's called. And then this lattice work is really beautiful. Kind of like that Heidi Swap thing. I think it's really quite neat for vintagey stuff. This is this really neat honeycomb one and the dot fade and the splatters. Lots of neat ones there and I'm really starting to make a dent in my collection of those. And this is the folk art one here. It's a similar one to the Heidi Swap one I just showed you but I think that the design is a little bit different and I really like how it looks. So you can see it here. It's a little bit different in size 
and you can tell I like it because I've got it twice there. <laughs> and these actually are sold separately when you buy them online and I'll look for them. But this is a cloud and star pair, which I think is really neat. And then this you saw me use in week 47 of the Bible Art Journaling Challenge. And then there's this one as well. And these are both Hero Arts stencils, which I think are beautiful. And then this I won't be able to link to, but it's an artist loft thing, which means you can get it at Michael's. And I think this is just really a basic thing to have. It really helps you to get your circles down. And I think really fantastic for when you're doing shapes and learning to draw as well. That'll be really helpful. And I don't really have one that's the right size for this. So this will be a good addition to my collection. I did not get a ton of papers while I was away but I did get a few that were really fun and I want to show them to you. This is from the Jubilee line here and it is really beautiful. So it comes with this on one side and then the other side is these beautiful hearts and I thought that was quite nice and there's also some of these from the Whatever is Lovely set and there's lots of different little sections you can cut out and this comes with butterflies. There's a lot more to this set. I just couldn't possibly have brought it all back. I didn't have enough space in my luggage. And here you can see on top of this that this is some acetate, so it's clear plastic, and it has some really beautiful lettering that is quite cute on here. That's also from Illustrated Faith. And then this is some beautiful printed vellum that just has a really soft pattern to it and this green here is really nice. And here from We Are Memory Keepers is this really fun acetate. It's really wild. So I'm not sure what you would do with it, but it is it's called Clearly Bold Neon Pink Dot. <laughs> and I think that's basically what it is. It's quite bold and very fun and cheerful. I did test some pens on this, so disregard that. But this is a, a white vellum 40 pound from Basil and it is a really nice paper. I've not had a chance to try Basil before but here is some of their white cardstock and it's just really nice paper. I'm really pleased with it. And this is another one from the Illustrated Faith collection and this has got some fun paint splats but it also has this beautiful kind of verse right in the corner here and that's so nice and I've got here some clear plastic and it doesn't look like much in the packaging but I think this is really cool because these are heat resist heat resistance non-tearing and you can use these to make shaker cards which is really fun window cards you can stamp emboss all of that kind of stuff because it will take the heat so you can actually do embossing powder on it you know stamp on it do embossing powder heat it up and it won't have a problem and I also like to use it to make my own stencils with my die cutting machine which is what you see a little bit of here shadowed in the light and this is fantastic I think the kind of hardy tools like that that don't look like much can sometimes be your secret weapons in your studio which are quite fun. So here I have uh, some mini craft tags and I want to show you the difference that this right here is the craft tag that I normally use, this manila tag, but as you can see the size is quite different and I love this smaller size. I won't link to this so you'll see this size linked and you can go to look at tip-ins and then you can see that other size linked if you want to. But this is fantastic. If you like the paper, then you can actually get it in sheets right here. And this is the Manila Tag uh, sheets, basically. And I love this. It's 8.5 by 11. It's fantastic for a lot of different things. So here is the Wallflower, Wallflower Vellum from Tim Holtz. And this is beautiful printed vellum. And I just cannot speak highly enough of how beautiful these are. The, every sheet is stunning. Tim Holtz never does anything halfway. All of his stuff is amazing quality. And this is just beautiful, really beautiful vintage feel to every sheet. And it's just stunning. It goes on and on. 
Uh, this is really special. This is an actual collection here called Creating in Faith, and you can see an example here. I think this this is really special. This is actually sent from Prima Marketing, and it was designed by Jamie Doherty, you can see, and she designed all of these with Prima Marketing, and the idea behind these is that they actually fit in the margins of Bibles, and you can use them in other ways, of course. There is some really great things here that are perfect for fitting in some of your scrapbooking and other designs, and there's some rub-ons that are just really neat. These are smaller rub-ons, which are perfect for, say, in an insert that you want to put, or a tip-in that you want to put in your Bible or art journal, and I particularly like this one. I think these are really pretty. And then there's actually some larger rub-ons here, which are not quite as good for putting in your Bible, but they will work in other kind of decorative ways, which are really neat, but they're all faith-based. And these are actually, these were gifted to me by Prima Marketing. I wanted to feature these in the class that I did with scrapbook.com that's coming out. And so they offered to send me some of these. There's a heart with a cross here. There is this, which is really fun. These are the Bible books. So you can actually use any of the books of the Bible here and the numbers to create. And this is the symbolism stuff. I don't know that I would use this as much, but I think some people will really enjoy this. And I think that the books of the Bible, this is a fantastic way to record what it is that you have done some art journaling on. And then there's some beautiful ones here. I particularly like this royal set, these little scrolls. All of these fit in the margins of journaling Bibles. And then, of course, there's the ladies, Mary, Ruth, Eve, and Esther and some phrases here which are in a nice hand lettering style. I really like this set. I think Jamie Doherty did an awesome job on putting this together and being really thoughtful about what people needed and responded to that. And she is quite sweet and I really hope that we can support her if you haven't already brought any of these products. They're actually made for Bible art journaling which is a lot of what you see on my YouTube channel and blog and I think that a lot of you will really enjoy this set if you haven't yet seen it. Now, I did warn you guys that this was a giant haul video. I know this is taking time but how on earth could I possibly fit this in other than to move it past the camera for 10 seconds? I actually want to show it to you so I'm sorry it's taking so long but I hope you really enjoy this. So this right here is an embossing folder and these are dies and I would have to use these with my Sizzix Big Shop machine. It is a die cutting machine. I could probably use my other machines. This this is a Spellbinders die. There, there are dies in here that are not meant to go with the Big Shop, but can. And we can use these interchangeably, especially if you use the die cutting machine that I recommend. And you can look up die cutting on my blog if you want to see how I use mine. But one of the things you can use is embossing folders and this actually embosses the texture that you see. So these are some waves and I think this would be quite fun to use, especially as my husband is very into bodyboarding. He likes to get out the waves. So I wanted to pick this one up thinking of him and I actually also thought that some of these were quite fun. I really like this set here from Kaisercraft. It says, be beautiful, remember this moment, love life. I think these are really neat. I especially like this, be beautiful. And these are really heavy duty quality thin dies. And it comes with uh, this shim in here, which is magnetic so it will actually stick to it which is fantastic for storage and I've got the circle dies from Lawn Fawn. I felt like I needed a good set of circular ones. I've got other kind of nested dies like this but I think this will be really helpful to have in my set. I have this set which I have opened as you can see and it is so fun. This is a really cute little photo frame and it comes with all of these different shapes. 
and I have actually used this for a few different projects already and I'm really enjoying using it and I'm going to take it out of this but I wanted to show it to you in the packaging so that you could see what it is. I got this at scrapbook.com for part of my class and you'll have to see in the class what I did with it. I'm loving how it turned out. And then there's this little love notes and let's just pop this open so you can see how big these are. So they're about that size and I think they're quite cute. They're pretty close to this size. Yep. Yeah. So you can see they're showing you what size they actually are. And of course they've got that little heart shape at the end of them, which I think is really sweet. And this is actually the word remember. And this is the kind of bubble area around it. So you can back it up with a little bit of spacing around it with another color perhaps and remember is a phrase that I like to re really keep in the forefront of my mind because I like to remember the goodness of God and the things that he's done in my life and so I felt like this was really good for an upcoming project. This right here is all of these little intricate dies, these thinlets and they spell out some beautiful words. Here's another which is that globe that you saw me use with the masking paper and I love how beautiful this die is. Check this out. And all of that raised area just cuts all of that just beautifully. That's a really nice die. Everything Sizzix does is nice. This is another one. These are triplet dies so you can actually layer these. So they come out with lots of different options and that's why it's called a triplet is because you can layer them to get different results. So these are all of my dies and embossing folders and I think that these are really quite versatile and fun. I'll get a lot of use out of these. Now let me start by showing you this. We've just been looking at dies and this is a stamp and die set. So as I told you before, there is actually a stencil that goes with this as well and this is quite a fun way in which Tim Holtz tends to interchange what he does so that you can kind of use them all together. So let me pull these out of here. I've got them in this for now and I took some of that Illustrated Faith paper from the whatever is lovely set and just use these dies to cut some of that up and I mean look at the possibilities. These cut out all of those shapes and then you can stamp on top of the shapes. There's The possibilities are limitless really so you can see that that would be a really fun set. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with these I think. I think you can always have something like this that will end up adding a lot of value because it interchanges with lots of different ideas and so I'm looking forward to this. And I do have some other stamp and die sets but I think that's one of the best I've seen so far. Get that out of the way and I'll just show you. Remember I said that these acrylic blocks were in my tools set. I want to just bring one on camera here with you really quickly and show you that what you can do is actually for example, this beautiful feather set. I think these are stunning. I'm pretty excited about these. And as you can see, this here is actually the darker kind of background version of this. You could use it by itself, but you can actually stamp this in perhaps a lighter color and then go in with a darker color on top of it. And the same with these two to get a kind of graduated layered look. And layered stamps are quite fun. So the way in which these kinds of stamps work, in case you don't know how stamps work, is this is quite bendy and flexible. It's just some clear plastic of a sort and you can actually take this acrylic block, put this on there and then when you stamp you get a perfect impression. And the same thing goes with say a cling stamp which this is not new but you've seen me use this before possibly if you've been around me long and I can put this on there as well and do the same thing. You just want to make sure that your stamp is actually on 
the whole block and it's not hanging over and then you'll get a good impression when you do it. And speaking of getting a good impression, I also got from scrapbook.com this, which is fantastic. This is the Stamper's Secret Weapon and this is actually just a foam board, believe it or not, but it works fantastically, I think, if you put it on to an area of your Bible page where there's not going to be a lot of give underneath. And if you do that, then you can get an even better impression by sliding it underneath your Bible page in that margin area when you stamp. And if you do have quite a lot of give, then it might give you a little bit of trouble, but it's fantastic otherwise. So I would recommend that and for general stamping it's definitely going to improve things and that Stamper Secret Weapon actually also comes with this little tool which is a piercing tool just perfect for once you get your dies cut to actually poke them out of the dies. The paper can stick sometimes and having a little piercing tool is quite nice but it just comes with it which is fantastic. So I'm gonna move that out of the way so I can get myself a bit of space here. And these right here, these three are the only ones I'm not going to link to. And that's because I just can't find them, but they were cheap and I just decided to grab them because I thought this would be great for making little cards so I can have them handy. So I will set those aside. And if you want to and you like them, you can look at Crafters Workshop. This hot off the press feathers I think is beautiful. I'm gonna to link to this and everything else. And I'll just go through these really quickly. So here is some Heidi Swap stamps. These are actually for doing little, these two here are for doing planners and it's little sizes that fit perfectly for planners. And I think, I mean, you can see that those little glasses are just tiny next to my finger. And I think these will be perfect inside of the actual margin of Bibles. And so that is why I am pretty excited about these. But you could use these for your planners or for any other kind of smaller area that you want to stamp in. This is another one that's just a little bit bigger, but it's beautiful. I really like that. I love this from Dear Lizzie. And I think I'm actually gonna cut these hearts apart so I can fill the jar up and let it brim over the edge. I think that'd be really cute. There's lots of ideas there. This from Amy Tangerine. I love this map. I think it's beautiful. And that's from her Finders Keepers collection. And this I'm pretty wildly crazy about from Hero Arts, Clearly Kelly. These are really neat little alphabet stamps and they happen to fit really well in the margin of Bibles. I think it's probably my favorite right now. I'm pretty excited about it. And this is another little alphabet set, which is fantastic, I think. It's nice to have small alphabets for people like me who do artwork in my Bible. And I love this. These are so cute. They're for handmade little things when you wanna say made this, 100% made, that sort of thing. But this says made with love, the good kind, which I thought was really special. And here are a couple of Stampers Anonymous sets from Tim Holtz. They're really beautiful. I love this hand lettering. And this is from Hero Arts. This says you're so loved. Happy birthday. Follow your heart. Wishing you the best. I think this is really good for card making. This right here. I really like the geometric shapes. I think it's really beautiful, but it will be nice to have on hand for using in the rest of the year, I think. I can use some of these for other ideas so I can get some more use out of that than just for Christmas. And I love this because it is actually a layering stamp thing. So I can, just like the feathers, I can put this block of color down and then I can go in with this on another color over the top. And the same thing with the stems. You can get a solid color and the leaves. So this, I think I'm really looking forward to seeing how I can do some layering stamping. And here's another Tim Holtz collection. These are a bit smaller than some of the other ones I've seen. And I particularly like the little cutlery silverware there. I think it's quite cute in the nest. There's some really beautiful ones in there. And this is from Inka Dinka Do. Some really nice kind of Christian 
Jesus type of statements and crosses, things like that, that would go nice. And they are quite small, actually. The Most of these are quite tiny and would fit in the margin of a Bible. Deep Red does some really nice rubber cling stamps. So this comes off of here and attaches to an acrylic block. And this is a really beautiful little set of kind of works of a clock, which I think are you know, gears and pulleys, they're beautiful. There's another one that's kind of like it, which would go well together. And then this is some really fun tassels. I like these. I showed these on my social media. I think they're quite pretty. And let me just bring these in. Let's see here. I tried to get everything I could find of paintbrush marks. So here we have a few different options. So I have these ones, these ones, and these ones, and mixed together, they create a nice array of options. And then on top of that, there's also this one from Prima, which is some coffee stains. And I think these are super, super cool. I put, I use these to actually decorate the outside of my art journal. And honestly, you could probably splat these, but these are perfect splats. They look like they were meant to be used in my opinion so I quite like how they turned out. I got these Project Life baby girl set that is probably good for doing Project Life type stuff but I thought it would be good just for card making because I need to make my own cards a bit more than I do and make time for that so that's what that's for. This is Hero Arts Alphabet. It's got a really kind of whimsical look about it and I think it's really cute. Um, I wanted more alphabet sets when I came home, so I'm really pleased with what I ended up with. And here is the mini version of the Blueprint Sketch set that Tim Holtz has. He's got tons of them. This is just a section of them, and I think they're absolutely stunning. But these actually fit in the margin of our Bibles. I've checked. It actually says in the packaging that they're three inches wide, but these are all within two inches and will fit, except for this sewing machine. I think this one's a little bit bigger than two inches, but most of these will fit in a margin of a Bible and are just perfect, I think, on cards, things like that. They're just a cute little size. So I'm hoping to collect more of these as I go, because there's a ton of different ones. And I'm getting close to the finish here. I wanna really encourage you to take time to think about what it is that you want from me of all these supplies and go check out what you might want to get yourself, but don't go and spend the earth and then tell me that your husband doesn't like me. I hear that enough. <laughs> People tell me that their husband doesn't like me because they've spent money on art supplies, but please use some restraint. Only get what you need or, you know, budget yourself and get what is exciting to you and that you know that you can use again and again. Like, I can use alphabet stamps again and again. And that is really handy. I will use this. I love these. These are super cute little dangling Christmas ornament type stuff. And I, I like to try and use things or buy things that I can use for more than one purpose. And I think some of these I'll be able to make use of with cards and in my Bible and in art journaling and in anything else. So that is where I end up spending my money on these sorts of things. This is another one great for card making. Thankful for you every day. This is me missing you. Hello there. Love you bunches. It's really fun. So uh, here's from Bow Bunny. Captured stamp. I think these are really sweet. I like the love this with the arrow. I think that's nice. I particularly love this alphabet stamp. I really enjoy smaller case. I think that's quite nice. And this is beautiful here from Avriel. There's another from Avriel. I really like this. This is really sweet. These are clouds that spell love you, hello, and congrats. And there's some numbers there in case you want the number of years. And there's little clouds in the shape of hearts and puffs. And here is also the plane with the sign. So you can actually have the sign instead. And it's really sweet, but it also has 
all of the dies. I've cut this apart already, but you can see that you can actually die cut out this stuff or you can stamp it or both. So it's another one of those stamp and die sets that I have and I love it. And just as we finish here, here's another one really sweet little bird that has some little sentiments inside of its body there saying believe, inspire, dream, things like that. And this says you color my world. I think this will be really great for card making. And then let the wind carry you. This is another from Jamie Doherty, but it's part of the Bloom collection that she has. And so I didn't include it before, but it is actually a design from her and is just beautiful. And all these birds were made to work well in the margins of our Bibles and they are just stunning and a really great addition to any faith-based art journaling type things that you're doing or even for cards. So I love all of this. I think it's so much fun. I don't want you to go out and buy one of everything. I got it on an incredibly good deal or free and I am very blessed. I have no qualms about saying that I feel very blessed to have really grown my art supply collection on this trip, but I am going to use these things and really want to use them in a way that is going to benefit you guys. So please do take time to tell me what it is that you want and hop over to my blog post, get off of YouTube, go in the description, link over to my blog post, and then you can comment over there where I will be able to pick up your comments and see them all in one place and begin to respond to you and see what I can do to help you be able to grow in your creative journey in encountering Jesus. And I am really looking forward to hearing from you soon. And I hope that you'll enjoy all of the links. As I've said before, all of them will be over on that blog post, all categorized. So you'll see them in sections like this and it'll make it easy for you to see what you're looking for. And I hope you'll try out some fun things and share that with me so that I can see what fun things you're doing. Thank you so much for joining me on this long video and I am so looking forward to hearing from you in the comments. And can you believe it? I've finished the video and I didn't get these two in and I've been using these ones in the art journal that I was putting together for my class at scrapbook.com so I forgot to actually share these two with you because I didn't bring them in my luggage with me but they are so beautiful and super fun these flowers and the stems are just stunning and they're I think these are really nice nice little vintagey worn text and so I didn't want to miss these out because they're so fun and if you haven't seen them thought you'd want to see them so that is it officially I have made it through all of these supplies and can't wait to hear from you